Hello, it's the uh, end of another sailing season. Here we are in October and the nights are drawing in. Everything's feeling cold and damp and it's the right time now to uh, start de-rigging the barge. Today we're going to be lowering the mast, lowering the topmast, uh, unshipping the bowsprit, getting rid of the mizzen and all the sails and the associated gear. Before we do anything, we need to air the sails to ensure we don't put them away damp and also because all of the bugs of the world seem to think that these sails make a great place to sleep over winter so uh, we want to get rid of all of those little buggers. Removing the foresail is quite straightforward. The hanks are twist shackles and it's soon out the way and onto the trailer. Moving aft the mizzen sail is removed by first lifting the boom gooseneck out and running it inboard before unshackling it and the topping lift from the clue of the sail. Uh, it's just going to lay out the way on the side deck somewhere. We unreeve the braille and take the blocks off the head of the sail. Next we prepare the stand lift. This is the, the tackle that pulls the uh, spreet into place and can be used to lower it away. <laughs> We need to ensure that the tail is free to run before taking a bit of weight and removing the muzzle fitting which is securing the bottom of the spree to the mast here. We can now run the spree inboard and once it's inboard we can just drop it off from the peak of the sail. The luff is unlashed from the jack stay and then the throat of the sail is unshackled from the collar fitting and the sail is dropped away quite simply and got rid of. To lower the mizzen mast we attach a line row from the mast case winch through the half yard block on the spree to the top of the mast before removing the forestay and lowering away in hopefully a controlled fashion. Once down the cleat bolt at the bottom of the mast can be removed allowing the mast to be run inboard using the line on the top of the mast to assist. Our attention can now switch to the topmast. First, we wrap a strop around the fore horse to take the hill rope tackle and rig up the hill rope, which runs from the deck through a block on the fore side of the top of the mast and back down to the heel of the topmast. You need to ensure that none of the stays and halyards are tight and ease them away if necessary by slackening the bottle screws or letting go the halyards before we wind up an inch or two on the hill rope. This raises the topmast just enough for someone aloft to remove the fid, which is used to keep the topmast in place when raised. It can now be lowered away by the man on the winch, taking care not to get a riding turn or your fingers trapped, that's quite important. Once you've lowered it to the desired position, pop a lashing on the bottom of the mast to secure it and clear away as much of the uh, gear that's laying on the deck as possible. Done, having done all that, now we move to the main event, the lowering of the mast. It's controlled using these great four sheath stayfall blocks on the stem of the barge, the long stayfall wire and the windlass. Before starting this process, it's worth carrying out a few safety checks. You want to make sure your pulls are engaged fully before you wind. You've got, we've got these ones on the port and starboard sides of the winch. But we've also got these ones on the coast so um, we've got plenty of pulls to make sure we're well braced. We want to look, is the stem band secure? This is that the metal band that goes down the front of the stem and is uh, what the staple blocks are shackled to. You want to make sure that's not in any danger of pulling out. Uh, has been known on barges in the past. And how does the staple wire look? That's a simple check. Check the wire, just make sure there's no rust and no broken strands. The wire to be nicely greased and just make sure it's in good condition. It's worth taking into account the prevailing conditions as well. It helps to lower down on the tide when the barge is afloat because it keeps her level, but also it helps with the strain on the barge. It seems to sort of ease it a little bit. Barge laying head to wind is also helpful because it stops the sail from billowing. If you can't have either of these and you have to lower down, it, you can still do it, it's just good practice. We begin this process by popping the dog on the anchor chain, uh, which take the weight of the chain and removing the chain off the barrel. 
before putting the sacrificial welts onto it. These help avoid the wire cutting into the main welts uh, which we use on a day-to-day -day basis, just avoids putting grooves in them. The next task is to bring the long staple wire on deck oh, yeah, this one's a mucky one. and wrap it around the windlass three times. You want to make sure that you've got three complete turns because it can look like when you've got the anchor chain on there it looks like you've got three turns but that's actually only two full turns so you want to make sure you've got the three complete turns. Run the tail of the staple wire all along the deck. Don't coil it though because it's more likely to snag if you coil. So make sure it's all run out on a straight line as possible. We take the weight on the windlass uh, which ensures it's got the tension and then you want to make sure that you've got the staple wire fast securely around the bit heads and cleat applying a lashing for security because you don't want it to suddenly jump off because wire can jump. Once you've done that you can remove the stopper knot and the bulldog clips which secure the staple. Remove the mast case bolts at the back of the mast and just ease a little on the main braille to ensure there's no strain on the winch. We were told once in the past that Edith May's main braille was ripped out the deck when lowering down which must have been fairly dramatic. Um, but that might have been more indicative of the state of the deck than the setup. We've now got the mast ready for lowering. So easing away carefully, you may need to help the wire over the barrel initially, but do make sure you don't trap a finger. As the mast eases back, the weight will increase on the winch. So try to ensure a smooth flow over the barrel rather than juddering it down and be alive to the wire starting to take charge. Once you feel that the weight is getting quite a lot to handle, you can take a turn around the bit heads to increase the friction and keep control. The first thing that lands on the deck is the sprit, diagonal spar that gives the barge its Thames Spritzel barge name. It will sit on the starboard quarter, but you might want someone just to uh, guide it into position as it comes down that last little bit. and uh, Make sure it doesn't trap the sail but also you want to avoid the fair lead, we don't cause any damage. And it's also worth putting a cushion, uh, some tyres or fender under the forward end, which will avoid it digging into the hatch cloth. Once it's landed, you can remove the muzzle, which is attaching it to the bottom of the mast and get it clear. We continue lowering the mast onto its prop ensuring the mast has landed securely before we lash the staple wire up and attach braces to ensure the mast cannot topple over. We can now remove the topsail bands shackling the sheet, tack and head stick and cutting the lashings attaching it to the hoops. This can now be taken ashore and folded up. The mainsail is unshackled from the collar of the mast and jack stay. The peak is just dropped off the end of the spree and the brow lines and main sheet removed. We fold the mainsail up into a snake which makes it easier for handling when we get it ashore. You want many hands for this job. With the gear down, we can now strip the running and standing rigging and take everything back to the dry store at home where the gear can stay dry for a few months until we reverse the process in the spring. Finish the day with a well-earned cold beer and toast the end of another year saying that you did Well done everybody, cheers to you, mate.